Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, this is the Mock It Till You Make It session. Thanks for being here. Um, hope you're having a good morning. I, uh, if you take a look at this slide here, you're gonna see my Twitter handle there. So know that if you have any questions after this, um, you can reach out to me there. Uh, also, the content for today's slides is all licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. So um, I have a link to that licensing information at the end of this talk, at the end of the slides. Um, so feel free to use the content in that way. Uh, that QR code there is going to take you to um, my website where there's a couple of links for the two talks that I've done here at Codepalooza. Um, I also have a tweet that I sent out yesterday uh, announcing my first talk, which has my um, website URL on there too, so you can get to it from there too. All right, so we're going to be looking at um, auto mocking resolvers uh, so that you can use them for your tests and your storybook stories. Um, before we get going, I do want to take some time to say thank you to the sponsors. Um, they, you know, made Code Blues uh, possible for us. So absolutely, thank you so much to them. And, and make sure you, um, if you get a chance, to thank them as well. And um, real quick, I did want to say um, if I'm going to try something new here virtually, I've never kind of taken questions as I go along um, with a talk, but I'm going to be watching the chat. So if anything does pop up, um, let me know. I'll also give you some a little bit of time here and there to, to maybe type out some questions. Um, so, you know, I'll awkwardly pause and stare at the chat for a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's let's give that a shot and see if that works out. Um, the tech we're going to be touching on today, we're going to be looking at GraphQL, which is a graph uh, query language for your API. Um, we're also going to be looking at Apollo, which has some great features as far as implementing GraphQL in your application. Um, and we're going to be using Storybook. So typically when I ask a room, you know, how many people are familiar with Storybook, how many people have used Storybook, it's usually about 50-50. Um, so let me take some time to describe to you what Storybook is. Um, Storybook is basically going to give you an organized way to um, have all your visual renderings of your components available, and uh, it kind of serves as like a component dictionary of everything that you have in your app. Uh, it works really well because it lets you develop your components in isolation, so outside of your normal user navigation, user workflows. I mean, I even had an app where we were using Storybook pretty heavily that I forgot how to log in to the app because I literally never had to do that. So um, uh, a few other things that it does too, it makes it nice for somebody like QA to go in and you know double check, do these components, match the designs, has anything unexpected changed, that kind of thing. Um, also gives you an opportunity to make sure things like buttons, click, um, that you're you know uh, calling the functions that you expect, that kind of thing. And there's some great add-ons too. Um, you can set it up to where you can have really pretty documentation within Storybook um, or do accessibility testing within Storybook. So it's pretty robust. Uh, it makes for a great dev environment. Um, so yeah, definitely if you have any more questions on Storybook, uh, let me know and or reach out to me afterwards too. Uh, we are going to be using React for our front-end framework today, but um, anything that you see here is going to be usable in Vue, in Angular, in a number of different front-end frameworks. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the demo app that we're going to be using today. The demo app that I'm using is called All the Ricks, and that link will actually take you to the code base, the repo for it. Um, and then we're using the Rick and Morty API, which is basically an open source API that uh, catalogs all of the characters, all of the episodes within the Rick and Morty universe. They um, are open source, like I said, so if you do want to take some time to contribute, they're asking for help right now, too. So storybook stories. Actually, before we do that, let's jump into... Oh. Just a second, you all my screen share is not cooperating.
kind of ran into this yesterday too, but it was a different issue. Let's see if maybe See if maybe we can do it this way. Yeah, I think we can. Let's see. Let me turn off my camera so it's not distracting to you guys. There we go. All right, cool. So. Where are my slides? There they go. All right, cool. Okay, so let's um, take a look at the demo app that we're gonna be using. Um, it's a pretty basic app, and what we're doing is we're setting up this Apollo client here uh, using this endpoint that is the Rick and Morty API.com slash GraphQL endpoint. And um, we're passing this Apollo provider here, which is basically just rendering this episodes component and then this cards component right here. Um, if we take a look at the episodes component, we're going to see we're basically just uh, specifying the query here that we're using, looking for episodes filtering by the name Rick, um, info count, and then getting the name of the episode. We're also um, taking a look at if something is loading, we're going to use this default material UI circular progress indicator with this loading text. And then if there is an error, we're just spitting out error with a sad face. And then if there's no data, we're using um, this text here, no data available. Um, otherwise, we're looping through and we are mapping across the results that we get back from that query to display the episode name. Uh, the cards is very similar. So if we take a look at that, um, we have the query up here that we're using. So page one, filtering for the name Ricks. Uh, we'll go with all the Ricks though, instead of page one of the Ricks. I think it's just a little bit catchier, right? So um, this info count here results with some data that we're pulling back from that query. Um, same thing. Here's your loading indicator, the error text that we're expecting, no data available. Otherwise, we're going to map through the results and display the information that we're getting back from the query. Um, I'll show you what the app looks like quickly. This is it. Um, like I said, pretty basic. We're just getting the count of episodes. Here are all the episodes with the name Rick in them. Um, the count of total characters with the name Rick in them, and then these cards that display with that information that we're expecting. Um, cool. Any questions on the demo app so far? Okay, so let's take a look at uh, these storybook stories and how we're setting them up. Um, this is what it looks like in Storybook. You basically have this little side panel here where you have an initial story, and then underneath it, you have um, your stories laid out. Um, typically, we wouldn't be getting an error here. We would actually be seeing a component being rendered. Um, let's take a look at that story and see how that one specifically is set up. So um, I am using the Stories of API for uh, the Storybook stories. And there is a newer version as of, um, I think version 5.2 of Storybook that is called Component Story Format. I do have a link to that in the slides as well. Um, I, For our purposes, we don't need to update this code base. Um, but it does make it a little bit easier to, as far as syntax, makes it a little bit more portable to write out stories. Um, but basically, here's that initial story name that I mentioned, and then here's the actual render of that cards component for that default story. Um, so if we take a look at the error we saw, it basically tell, it tells us could not find client in the context of past then as an option. Um, 
basically what that means is if we were looking at our app, we would see we're actually providing that Apollo client, right, with this Apollo provider, um, which Apollo provider is basically like React's context provider. It's going to go ahead and um, let you access the client in the context throughout your app. Um, so that's what we're missing as far as that initial story. We don't have a client in the context, right? So to fix that, we could do the same exact thing. We have this Apollo client here with that same URL. And then we're wrapping the cards component now in that Apollo provider so that it actually has access to the client. Um, so if we look at that, we'll get this loading indicator and then we get pretty much exactly what we saw within the app, right? We get the count total 84, we get all the different cards that um, for the characters that are filtered by the name Rick. Um, so it looks pretty much exactly like the app. Um, so we could do things that way in Storybook. The problem becomes um, that we're having to hit the actual API, right? For every single test, everything that I mentioned today, we're showing it in Storybook, but really um, it applies to testing as well. Storybook just kind of gives you like a pretty visual representation of what we're going to be talking about. Um, but you do have to, in with the Apollo provider passing in that content or that client that has that GraphQL endpoint, um, you are hitting a, an actual API, right? Which means that um, it's going to be expensive as far as running your tests and rendering your Storybook stories. Um, also, if the API is down or if you need to be working offline for some reason, you're not going to have access um, to be able to do that. So uh, what we could do is we could use this mocked provider here. And the way that we do that is we basically specify a query, right? This query is the same as we saw before. And we set up um, this these mocks, uh, which is basically going to mock out the response to that query. We have the query specified right here as the request. And then we have the result um, in that same shape as far as data, characters, and all of our results here. Um, so then we can take mocked provider and we can pass in box. Um, this add type name false here is just there to make it easy so that you don't have to basically do this um, for every single object that you're adding in here. Um, and uh, yeah, so this mocked provider here is basically going to use that mocked query instead. Um, mocked provider is actually part of uh, React testing Apollo here. All right, so what does that look like? Oh, well, we actually have an error here. The reason why we have an error, let's double check. Um, so actually the error that we're seeing kind of demonstrates um, the reason for auto mocking your resolvers when it comes to tests, when it comes to storybook stories. Um, if we take a look at this query here, it's including this type in the results. If we take a look at the cards component here, we're actually missing that type from the results. So if I add it in, let's see if that fixes it. Nope, not yet. What else are we missing? Oh, we're also, no, we have it in there. We have it in here. We're passing in the mocks, like I mentioned. So what are we missing? Okay. Let me go ahead and do a quick check out here just in case I'm not on the latest branch. Wrong one. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the latest branch. Oh, 
Okay, I guess it just took a second for that to update. So yeah, basically we had to add that type. Um, and the reason why is because our storybook story broke because the query that we're using to render the cards is expecting that type in the results. But we weren't including it in the um, mock as far as the response. Um, so that will give you an error in um, storybook. But now that we fixed that, um, you'll see we're doing pretty much the same exact thing and just rendering the cards here. So um, by default, we get always two um, items or we're gonna get those two items, right? That we specified here in the characters. So we're getting exactly what we would expect as far as what's rendering in Storybook. Um, again, like it, the the problem comes in when you when you're mismatched as far as your queries, your query responses, that kind of thing. Um, but I could easily add in like a third character here if I wanted to. So um, let's just guess. This should be summer. There we go. Okay, so now we're rendering summer as well. Um, and again, if I if I was like to remove this type now, um, I would cause an issue in Storybook. So we get that same error. Um, so yeah, so it can get really hard to kind of keep up with every time I change a query as far as what I want to be rendering. Um, I have to make sure that my Storybook stories are up to date or else they completely break. Um, same thing with tests, right? If you're running a test and you're kind of doing like a snapshot or you're uh, making sure that certain things are being rendered, you're gonna run into the same issue. Um, so a great way to kind of handle this is to take a look at um, stories with mocking. Uh, and I do wanna take a second here and kind of touch on what we looked at so far. So again, I'm using the stories of Storybook API, uh, but there is that new component story format. These are all links that will take you to the documentation for these items. Um, we used Apollo Client, so Apollo Client's from Apollo Boost, and we used Apollo Client to create that client that we're passing in with the provider. Apollo Client kind of gives you some default uh, settings for your client, but we're gonna see later that we're gonna make some um, customizations there so that we can um, auto mock things. And then the Apollo provider, like I mentioned, is gonna go ahead and provide that client with throughout the context of your application. So if we take a look at stories with auto mocking, This is how we're doing that, and we're using that auto mock provider here, which is a, a custom provider. We'll take a look at what that looks like. I'll walk you through this code real quick. So we have these children here. We have these optional mock resolvers as props that we're passing in. Um, the first thing you're going to have to do in order to be able to use the auto mock provider is you're going to have to run this command here, Apollo schema download. If we run that, what we're going to see is we're providing that endpoint there, that Rick and Morty uh, type api.com slash GraphQL, and we're saving the output of that to the schema.json file. So now that that's done, Let's take a look at what that schema.json file looks like. Um, this is basically gonna serve as sort of a data dictionary that Apollo can output. Um, and we'll, we'll see like we have these types here. Uh, we have like, for example, here's a character object. We're specifying the ID, which is a scalar of ID. We're specifying a name for that character, which is, we have this description here, the name of the character with a type of scalar string, right? So, so yeah, basically this is gonna describe the data model for you that you have in GraphQL. Um, and then we can use this in our auto mock provider to 
convert it into what's known as a schema definition language. We're going to do that by doing an introspection result um, into that schema.json file. And we're going to use print schema, build client schema from GraphQL to put it into that schema definition language. We're then going to make an executable schema where we're, we're passing in the type definitions as that schema definition language format that we mentioned before. We're also going to want to add mock functions to schema, and you'll see how we use those later. But the, those are the optional mock resolvers that we mentioned before. So the mocks are being set as mock resolvers. The schema is this executable schema that we um, passed in the type depths to. Here's our Apollo client with some customization. Um, the link that we're using is this new schema link, passing in that schema that we created, including those mocks. And we're going to specify the cache as this new in-memory cache. Um, so in-memory cache is just going to give you some optimization as far as using your local storage so that things can run a bit smoother, a bit faster. Um, I do. I left this commented out in the code here just because it's really useful in terms of testing to make sure that what you expect to get is actually what you're getting. Um, but we're not going to be using that uh, in the demo right now. But we are then using this Apollo provider here, passing in that client that we created, that customized client that we created, and rendering its children. So that's the auto mocked provider. And if we take a look at the story that's using it again, basically we're just wrapping that cards component with that auto mocked provider. So if we look at the story for that, now we're seeing that we have all this kind of default stuff being rendered. Um, you'll see that anywhere where there's a query result that is a type of string, you're going to see hello world. Um, that's the default string that gets um, rendered if you're using the auto mock provider. Also, this number here is a random number. So if I reload, now I get this negative 17. Um, a couple of things here. So you might notice right away um, that the image is broken. The image is broken because the way that we're building that URL to go out and get the image is using is concat concatenating a string to the end of the rickandmortyapi.com slash images, right? So rickandmortyapi slash images uh, slash hello world is not an available image, so the image is broken. Um, also, this total of 17 here is a negative number, right? Which is, doesn't actually make any sense. Uh, we would expect it to be a positive integer. Um, unless you're strictly enforcing with the third party library, because I'm pretty sure that GraphQL doesn't provide an option to do that out of the box. Um, so likely your API is not restricting whether an integer can be positive or negative. So you might get a positive or negative value in this situation. Also note that even though we're auto mocking things, when we were asking for an array as far as the results, we got two items, which is the default. You'll get two items back for any um, results that are in array. So cool, this gives us a way to then like, let's say we decide that um, the type field is not useful in the cards. So let's delete it from the query there. Let's delete it from displaying. There we go. All right, so now the type is gone. Um, but our story hasn't broken, right? We're still seeing exactly what we expected. So that fixes that issue. But there's a way to kind of take this further. Um, real quick before we look at that, I do want to touch on what we've covered. So we took a look at the mocked provider um, to pass in mocks. We um, used GQL, which if you take a look at the query, 
you take a look at the query that we specified here, we're using this GQL, which is basically going to just parse um, your uh, query that you're specifying here into GraphQL query language from Apollo Boost. Um, we use the Apollo CLI to go out and get that schema download. We use print schema and build client schema to generate the schema definition language that we needed. We also use make executable schema and add mod functions to schema to actually be able to add mock resolvers to the schema and uh, create the executable schema so that we could link it to the Apollo client where we used um, those custom settings as far as the link and the cache, which is using the local cache now of in-memory cache. And we use a schema link to actually link the schema. All right, any questions so far? Okay, cool. So we used um, that auto mock provider. Um, let's take a look at what the auto mock provider actually looks like when we provide it with um, mock resolvers, those optional mock resolvers that we were passing in in the auto mock provider um, wrapper. The mock resolver is going to look like this. You have your query. Um, we're specifying the query as the characters, and then we're giving it back this information here, info count of one, and the only character that we're returning is Rick Sanchez. So that within Storybook. Looks like this. There's our info count of one. Here's Rick Sanchez. So what this does is it gives us the opportunity to pass in queries, but to also not let our queries break should we change anything as far as the queries we're using to get the information we're going to render within the component. So that kind of gives us some flexibility there as far as adding those mock resolvers specifically to the auto mock provider wrapper. Um, a couple of uh, kind of cool things here. So you can use this mock list from GraphQL tools. This mock list is going to let you, like I mentioned, by default you get um, two items, but now I can specify, OK, I want to use a list length of three, create that new mock list list length, and it's going to be um, randomly or automatically generated. So if we use that mock resolvers instead, we're going to see we get that array of three. Just like we expected before, we're going to see all that hello world there. Um, I do want to point out, too, there is a way uh, to specify exactly what you want returned for a scalar type, right? So if something is a string, maybe I don't want to see hello world. Maybe I want to see some, some other text there. Um, so you can definitely customize that. Um, I'm not going to go over it in this talk, but at the end of my slides, there is a really great link that walks you through and actually is super helpful as far as understanding what's going on um, as far as generating um, these uh, auto-generated um, items for the scalar types. All right, cool. So that's mock list. Um, the other thing that we can also do, do that's kind of cool as far as our storybook stories is use something like Faker, right? Um, we want more real world kind of data here. So we're going to um, use Faker and we can do like Faker.c even so that we can make sure we're receiving consistent results. And maybe instead of a name here, we want to do Faker. Um, random dot name.
Oh man. Okay, so what does the Faker documentation say? Hold on. Yeah, so Faker Faker is really cool in terms of giving you sort of like real world real world data. You can uh, pull random in images, um, types of images. You can specify like the category. You can also give it like um, address fields, those kinds of things. So, okay, dot fake, duh. Okay, so let's see if we can use this right here. You can even specify like last name, first name, suffix, that kind of thing. So that's kind of cool. Um, so, If you want to specify a more realistic um, name that's going to be generated with your mock resolvers, you could do that here. Okay, so now we have like a more realistic name. Um, it's going to be, we seeded it, so it's going to be consistent. Um, but if we hadn't seen it, it would be randomly generated um, every time. But this gives us a good way to um, get consistent results so that we can um, deal with things like snapshots, right? Or maybe we want um, we want it to look realistic as far as when we're looking at a component and understanding what we're displaying. So those are just kind of some features that you can use um, in mocking your resolvers. I the next thing I want to show you is this auto mocked provider with merged resolvers. So if we take a look, this is doing this is rendering the episodes and the cards as children, and the auto mock provider merged um, is also taking in mock resolvers here, and here's the the query mock that it's using. Uh, basically, we're just specifying an info account of twenty for the episodes query. The only difference between the auto mock provider that we looked at before and this auto mock provider merged is that now we're kind of like doing a deep merge here on this global resolvers and mock resolvers. Um, so the mock resolvers are going to be what we pass in, which we saw we were passing in that info counter 20 for the episodes. And then the global resolvers is just going to be a good way for you to set up sort of global um, resolvers for your query in a different file that you can um, that get automatically imported in for your auto mock provider. So if we take a look at what that looks like in Storybook, we're going to see that we have that total of 20 like we expected and it's not randomly generated so even if we reload we're still going to see that total of 20. And then we also, this is from the global resolver. So this is what we're going to get every time for that query. Um, quick note on that, you would typically go ahead and use the merge resolvers. There's really not, no reason not to. It works really well in terms of an architecture standpoint so that you can um, have those global resolvers available, but then also have the flexibility of overwriting something with a local resolver to a story or a test. Um, but the merge that I'm doing there is uh, only goes down a couple of levels. So if you did want to, you know, deep nest any sort of queries, it will overwrite some things. So just be careful with that specific merge uh, resolvers function. But like I said, that gives you good flexibility as far as being able to both have uh, global resolvers that you expect throughout all of your stories and then being able to overwrite or being able to amend um, queries that make sense for local kind of stories or local tests. All right, so we looked at auto mocking with local resolvers. We looked at auto mocking with merged resolvers. And we took a look at the mock list so that we can specify um, the number of items we want and randomly generate a certain number of items. 
we also took a look at using a library like Faker to uh, randomly generate more realistic data, but also possibly seed so that we can consistently generate certain data. Uh, we took a look at the merge resolvers function that is uh, looking at the global resolvers and the mock resolvers, which are being passed in to the auto mock provider and merging them together. So yeah, this is basically gonna give you the ability to um, both automatically mock things that you're gonna need, not break your stories, not break your tests necessarily, um, while still having flexibility to customize things as you go. The other cool thing that you can do with something really similar is um, mock states. So states is gonna be something like, um, what does your component look like when it's loading? What does your component look like when there's an error, right? We mentioned earlier that our app was using those states. And the way we do that is with, for example, for a loading state, we can specify this loading mock provider. So if we take a look at the loading mock provider, um, we're creating this new link here. Um, and it's returning an observable that returns nothing, but also never com completes. So we have this client here where we're using that link specifically, specifying the new in-memory cache, and then we're um, passing in that customized client, right? So we have an observable, which is kind of waiting for something, but it never completes in this scenario. So our storybook story, is going to be perpetually stuck in a loading state. So now what I could do is if I had like a story that was called cards, you know, like default cards that were rendering, um, I could also below it, below that default story, have a story called loading. And now I know what that loading um, state for that component that I'm rendering looks like. This is also super useful in tests because you can specifically look for, you know, if something is in a loading state, then this is what I want rendered. All right, I'm gonna pause there real quick and ask if there's any questions so far. Okay. Um, so like a loading state, the other thing that you could possibly do is set up an error. So in this situation, what we have is an observable, which is returning this error message here, which says error from error mock provider. Um, and then we are actually completing the observer at this point. Same thing, we set up a client, new Apollo client with this link, this cache, which is the in-memory cache. And that's gonna look like what we would expect the error state to look like, that error text with the frowny face, right? Um, again, like what you could do, I have a cards um, story with a default view of it. I have a loading view of it. Now I can also add an error view of it so I know what the component looks like. And then in your tests as well, you can make sure I am actually getting that error text back that I expect when there's an error. And same thing for um, like no data. Let's say that your query, you want to mock your query actually completing, but it's not returning anything. That's gonna look like this, where we return this empty data object here. We complete the observer. And then we do the same thing with the Apollo client. And now we get no data available text like we would expect. And just to show you what those stories look like, um, all you gotta do is wrap your component that you wanna render either in your tests or in your storybook stories. All you gotta do is wrap it with that loading mock provider, that error mock provider, that no data mock provider. So you don't need to worry about, um, you know, mocking every single time, like if loading, that kind of thing. Um, you should be able to just wrap it in this loading mock provider, which makes things a little bit simpler as far as setting up your tests, setting up your stories. Okay.
Okay. Any sort of questions so far? For the moth states, um, we looked at observable and we looked at Apollo link from Apollo link. Uh, we've touched on the Apollo link before. We're using um, some customization there. The observable um, is really useful for things like retrying, for polling, for batching, subscriptions, that kind of thing. The other thing that you can do within Apollo is as of Apollo uh, version 2.5, Apollo introduced local state management. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to use the Apollo cache as sort of the single source of truth for your data, right? Um, that's going to mean that you don't have to manage like a separate Redux store, for example. So we'll take a look at how to implement that. We have this local state provider wrapper here. And if we take a look, we're seeing something very similar to the auto mock provider. Here's our in-memory cache like we used before. Um, this time we do have to pass it in this resolvers here, this empty set. Um, and then I am setting up this character object here and basically making my results an array list length of three and filling it with that very specific character, which is randomly generating um, data as far, um, it's using Faker to randomly generate this data here. Then we can write directly to the cache here. This write data is what we used to do that from Apollo um, and specify, okay, here's our data object, our characters, info count, that list length of three. Um, I do have to put in the type names here, which we avoided earlier, but this time I do have to put those in. And then the results, um, which are gonna be that randomized uh, character times three. And then same thing, pass in the client to the Apollo provider and generate your children. So what that's gonna look like, is this. We have that randomly generated name, species, uh, type, all that kind of stuff. We're using that list length of three. And if we reload, we get consistent results because we're also seeding our fake. So in this situation, you could link a schema like we did before, but you can fake the data, right? Uh, which means that you don't have to rely at all on an API. You don't have to rely for the API to have implemented any sort of uh, new features. You can actually just write them directly to the cache and use them. Um, really, you don't have to wait for an API to be available at all. You can start your front end development by writing directly to your local cache. Um, and just for reference, if you did want to use your local cache, this is the way you would do it. So instead, this is pretty much the same exact thing as that cards component that we looked at before, except now we're going to specify this local query here and we're going to use this at client directive. Um, let's say that you're developing, the API team hasn't started working yet, you're working on the front end and you wanna start developing your components. So you do that using this write cache, using this local cache that you have available, um, and you're using this at client directive. As soon as the API becomes available, you can easily just delete this, make sure that your Apollo um, client is using the new API endpoint that's available, and then you're gonna be rendering using the actual API data. So yeah, I mean, this basically means that you can manage your local state without having to worry about Redux or anything, and you can um, avoid being dependent on the API being available. You can avoid being dependent on the API even being built in order to start building out front-end components. So yeah, so this, um, was kind of tricky to figure out. There's a lot of pieces, bits and pieces of it um, in a few different places, but it's been immensely helpful in quite a couple of code base just because I got super tired of having to mock out every single response that I needed for a query. Um, gives you good organization and lets you use things like storybook stories and your tests more efficiently. 
Um, so that's pretty much it as far as how you implement that. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Is anybody currently using Storybook um, in their application or have any questions as far as like what Storybook gives you within an application? <laughs> I do want to mention too um, that these are all of the links that were super helpful in helping me figure this out. There's a great talk from Chang Wang, who um, he works for Apollo and went through um, kind of the, the first steps in creating this. So looking through these is going to be super helpful as, sort of as, as far as implementing this. Uh, you could also look at my repos are available. Um, the repo for this talk that we were going through is available. So it has all those stories lined up for you, which are um, pretty nice as far as like step one, step two, step three in terms of implementing. All right, y'all, I'm going to leave it there. But um, absolutely, I'm here for another 10 minutes or so. So um, if you want to chat about how to implement this, you want to chat about storybook or the, what talks you're excited to see today. Um, I haven't gotten to look at the schedule today, so if anybody has any recommendations, that would be great too. Thanks, y'all.